So we want to make sure that you're just you're able to log in and able to build and run something and just be prepared for the, the hands-on exercises which would start after the break. How many people have already managed to log into the Pi computer this morning? Anyone who's having problems getting connected still? No? So we'll, we'll go through this quickly, but let us know if there's anything that's, uh, that's not working for you. Um, there are a few slides on the Pi computer about the batch system, about the compilers that are on the website. I don't propose to go through those, but we can, you can look at them yourself if you have some questions. We can try and answer, or perhaps someone from Fujitsu can help you as well. Um, so the, the purpose of this exercise is just to familiar, uh, in general would be to familiarize you with the, the various tools that are available. Um, you have an option to um, try out the tools with your applications, which is the more, the more important part. We're just providing this uh, small portable benchmark code as something simple and easy to work with. It's unlikely to have significant optimization opportunities, but there are all sorts of other things that you could perhaps uh, investigate with this code. You could run it in different configurations. It comes in different sizes. You can run it with different numbers of processes and threads. You can try around uh, different compiler options. Uh, different MPI optimizations are also possible uh, through environment variables, for example. So there's a lot of different things that uh, you could do with this exercise. We just want it as a simple test case that we can build, run on Pi computer, and verify that we get uh, something running correctly. Hopefully, you can already connect to the uh, Pi computer. The uh, connection command's at the top of the screen. So you, you'll probably use something like SSH to connect to your account. I think you all have VIHPS accounts with different numbers here. So put in your number, and then you can connect to the, the, the Pi system. Um, I, I don't know if you need the full uh, path name, or you can use a, a shortcut with just whatever you need to connect. When you're connecting for the later exercises, you'll need to be using uh, the X forwarding to be able to get uh, access to the graphical tools. So use something like dash X or dash Y, whichever you prefer. You can also use dash C, which uh, perhaps makes the, the uh, remote graphics a bit more efficient. Um, so connect into the Pi system, and that'll put you into one of these uh, temporary directories that have been provided. We have the tools installed. We have the tutorial exercise installed in a shared account, which is in the same group, but uh, in a shared directory. So hopefully you have access to that directory. You can see what it contains, and uh, we would like you to unpack the tar file that you'll find in the shared tutorial directory into your own directory, um, your own home directory, uh, a work directory if, uh, if you have multiple directories, and then you can cd into that directory and see what it contains. So is everyone finding these files and perhaps able to copy them or untar them into your own working directory? If anyone has a problem, let us know, and someone will come and, and help you find things. We're going to be working with uh, one of the NAS parallel benchmarks, which is uh, a relatively well-known parallel benchmark suite. We're using the version which combines MPI and OpenMP, so it allows us to demonstrate the, the tools capabilities in that configuration. If you're just interested in MPI or OpenMP performance, I hope that you still find that there's something that you can uh, find insightful from, this, uh, from using the tools with this code. Uh, there are a number of different benchmarks, three benchmarks provided in this uh, benchmark suite. They're all written in Fortran 77, which is certainly not the modern style of uh, Fortran or parallel programming but uh, it's highly portable and configurable, and we find it convenient for our exercises. So when you s um, list the contents of this directory, once you've uh, unpacked it, you'll see the names of the different benchmarks. We're going to be using the one called BTMZ. This is a block triangular uh, solver. Uh, there's a couple of other ones there that uh, you're welcome to try out on your own at some later point. In principle, you should just be able to cd into this directory, this top directory, and type make there. 
when you type make, things are set up. We have customized things for our tutorial here. So you'll get some uh, tutorial information telling you the recommended configuration that we suggest that you build. So make BTMZ in the class B size. This is one of the, the moderate sizes and with uh, eight processes. So this is a, a benchmark which needs to be configured with the number of processes it will run with. We specify that when building with uh, NPROX equal weight. So this information you find when you just type make on its own. As I said, we'll be using the uh, class B um, with N processes here. When you do the, the make, you'll see uh, it executing a number of commands. You'll see it's using the Fujitsu Fortran compiler, which is MPI FRT PX. We're using uh, the standard optimizations or the fast optimization here. We've configured things to enable the, the, the OpenMP, and uh, so this will be configured using MPI OpenMP for eight processes. That build will presumably run in a few minutes, hopefully less, and produce an executable which it puts into a subdirectory. So the, the bin directory is where you will find an executable that's been built called BTMZ. Um, class B for eight processes. If you didn't catch that, I'm going to run through it uh, on the laptop here so you can see hopefully that it also works uh, for me. So maybe I can make this a little bit larger. So I'm going to SSH into the, the Pi system. Um, I already have X forwarding automatically, but uh, if you don't, then you need to add it. I'm in my home directory here. The directory which contains the, uh, the tutorial information is in the shared directory, which is one level above this. So there's a tutorial subdirectory there with the, uh, the tar file that we want to unpack. I don't want to unpack it here. I want to unpack it in my subdirectory. Two directories down. So I now have a, a subdirectory that's been created and the contents are, as I showed you, the, the different benchmarks and uh, a basic make file. When I type make, I get some basic information um, from the benchmark about the different configuration options that I have. You can either copy and paste or, or type it in as you wish. Um, make BTMZ class B. class equals B, and then the number of processes that we're going to build and run with, in this case, eight. It's running through the compilation. There's um, eight or 10 uh, different source files that it has to build. Maybe it's a little bit slow because we're all building and compiling at the same time, but uh, that's to be expected. Anyone having problems getting this far and unpacking the tarbo? Running make? Okay, so now it's telling me that I have uh, the executable. Uh, it's in a subdirectory, so if I look again here, there's a bin directory that's been created that contains the, uh, the executable that we'll be able to use to, to run on the, on, on the Pi system. 
So I'm going to cd into that directory. We provide uh, a number of example job scripts. So those are in uh, the job scripts directory. We have a subdirectory for the FX10. And uh, we just want a simple job script that's going to be able to run things. So I'll just copy that here. PGA sub is the uh, submission, the job submission uh, command for uh, Fujitsu systems, also for K computer, to which we give it the name of the script, in this case, uh, run.sh. Here it's configured for eight MPI processes running on two compute nodes. We have specified uh, a job maximum runtime of 10, of 10 uh, minutes here. We shouldn't need nearly that amount of time. And it's going into the small partition the small resource queue. Um, here I'm specifying the name of the executable, which is based on the class and the number of processes which were specified. We're specifying the number of OpenMP threads that each process will use. High compute nodes have uh, 16 cores, so we're using two nodes, each with eight processes. That means four processes on each compute node. Therefore, we have four cores available to run for OpenMP threads, so that's what we're configuring and using here. This is a configuration variable for the benchmark itself that you don't need to modify. And then we're going to exec, MPI exec, with the number of processes that are executable. Uh, I think one thing to be aware of is that you need to specify the path to the executable unless you have the dot directory automatically on your path. So that's why it has dot and then the name of the executable here. So I should not need to modify this, I can just uh, submit it directly. It tells me it's in the queue. Um, I see it's already started, but uh, PGA stat would be the command that would uh, tell me whether it's wait waiting in the queue. I can see that it's already started running, and it will actually be writing its output into uh, an output file here. I can uh, see if it's started. Actually, it's uh, completed its execution here. So it runs, it runs with uh, eight processes. It gives a little bit of configuration information at the start about how it's running, how many threads it's running with. In this case, uh, eight times four is 32. It runs through 200 time steps, reporting every 20 time steps so we can actually see how it progresses. And then one of the nice things that it verifies itself at the end, verifies that the solution that it was uh, calculating conforms to the the criteria that it's expecting, so the accuracy required. So this was successful, that's good to know. Um, the benchmark's completed, and it also reports here the number of seconds that it actually ran for, in this case, 16 seconds. Hopefully, the configuration you ran, ran in something comparable to that. There can be small variations, of course. So hopefully, you also have uh, got this far. Something similar will be required for your own codes, but uh, with this simple exercise, I hope we've managed to get you, uh, at least show you an example of the compile commands that you would need to use on uh, the FX10 and the sort of job script that you would require for your applications. If you have problems configuring things for your own application, we'll try and help you or we'll find someone who can come and give you some assistance. So if there's no problems at this point, um, we'll take a short break. Um, the next part of our program, which we'll continue with uh, after the break, will be with Tau. And we'll propose we'd start that at 11 o'clock, but uh, we can take a break uh, until then. Uh, if you have some problems, some questions, then let us know, and we'll try and get you set up uh, so that you can continue with the exercises after the break. Okay, thank you.